Hi everybody, my name is Chloe. I'm going to start by burning some Palo Santo. Um, and I just bought mine on Amazon, so I don't know. Maybe it will help with the vibes, but also it's just a kind of a bit of privilege that I'm doing this right now to the side and then I'm going to make something I don't really have a recipe for but I'm gonna start I think it'll be like brownie bread kind of um, we also don't have a bowl so I'm just using this here pot to do all of my mixing in um, and I'm gonna start with a banana for the like moistness of it um, and I actually don't have any bananas either. This is my roommate's. Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really looked up any recipes for this. I hope I don't forget anything, but I just made brownies yesterday. So I feel like it's pretty much on the top of my head, like how to make moist breads right now. Um, harder than it looks without a bowl. in the background uh, and we went and got bodega in the short north for dinner and it was super good and I had a kale Caesar salad um, except that and I do this every time I ask for the dressing on the side because I don't like a quarter cup of dressing with my meals except then when it comes out there's like a whole salad made with cups of very dry lettuce which is good like I want a lot of lettuce except like in an ideal world, I'd get dressing on the side, they'd bring it out in a really huge, huge ass bowl, very in proportional to like how much salad I actually have. And then I'd put as much dressing as I want, toss it thoroughly, and then put that into the plate they served it with me. Because the point isn't that like I like dipping my fork in the dressing before I eat the salad. It's more so just that I don't want as much dressing as they normally would put on it. But then I hate it because I'm just eating like really dry pieces of lettuce. But other than that, it was really good. And I guess that's not really their fault. That happens in every restaurant. Um, I added grilled chicken to it, which is another one of my pet peeves. So it was really good. But it was like, I think, $2 or $3 to add grilled chicken, which isn't a lot. But pretty much, like, in a store, if you bought in bulk at, like, Kroger, 2 or $3 would be, like, one chicken breast, if not more than one. But whenever you add grilled chicken to an item, and it is like 2 or $3, you get like a quarter of one chicken breast. And I just don't understand why they could do a little bit more. Okay, so right here I have a mashed banana, and I just mashed it as well as I could. And I know it's not baby food, but whenever I smell mashed banana, it just tastes like baby food. But when I'm eating a banana, I don't get that taste or like feeling of baby food. Mm. And sweet potatoes are like that too. I just always think it's baby food. Okay, I'm also going to be adding some sugar. Um, and something funny, since we also don't have a bowl, we also don't have a measuring cup. So as of later, I've just been using this cup, which is just a glass. And we call them cups, but it's not a cup. It could be any measurement. But my thought is if I use this for all of the things, then the ratio will still be the same, right? Ish, you know, I'm just looking for consistency in the batter, I guess, long term. Um, so, this amount of sugar, one mashed banana, kind of going to stir that together. I'm also going to preheat the oven to 350. I just remember that. I feel like that's kind of a go to temp. my favorite products is a sugar lip scrub of Freeze, actually, my roommate, that she keeps in the shower and every now and then I use. Very rarely, of course. Um, and it's so good, and it tastes like it's a little treat. And I love that because, I mean, really, it's just a lip scrub. You can't be eating much sugar, but it's such a little treat. Okay, so look at the consistency of this. This turned out so well. 
like a cup of sugar, a banana. I could eat that right now. That looks fantastic, but I won't. I'm also going to add like a cup of cocoa powder because I think I'm going to do like a banana brownie bread kind of deal. So I'm adding um, ooh, tricky. Okay. Scratch that about half a cup of cocoa powder. And mixing that into the banana sugar. Oh my gosh, bring it here. Not sponsored. Fizz and bubble. Get it. Not sponsored yet, but fizz and bubble if you see this. <laughs> We're open to negotiations. <laughs> Um, also, I forgot to mention, this is going to be vegan and gluten-free. Not necessarily because I want you all to eat that way, but just that way it's always be friendly if you are vegan and gluten-free. So, right now we're talking one banana, a cup of sugar, half cup cocoa powder, and it already looks really pretty good, brownie-like. A lot of goop. Really great. Consistency. Ooh, okay, something else I saw really interesting lately. Um, and most of the things I see that are interesting are Instagram ads. And part of me knows it's just advertising and that, like, there's no maybe science or actual, like, popularity behind the product. Like, an item doesn't have to be popular for me to see it along with Instagram, even though it's giving me totally the impression. Um, this is just, like, maybe a teaspoon of baking powder. But it was for leg masks by Nair. And so it literally looks like the like Amazonian clay face masks that you can make with like um, the clay and apple cider vinegar. It like have the same consistency, same dark gray look as that, but you put it all over your legs, let it sit, which is like similar to Nair already. So when I was reading the description, I was like, oh, this is just Nair. But it's like a mask for your legs because when you do all of that, it's also supposed to make it softer. It's supposed to like moisturize so you don't actually have to moisturize. You just do this part and it is like shaving and moisturizing all in one. Um, I'm also going to add a bit of oil just because it doesn't seem to be as moist as it should be. But I think it's just because I did one banana. So that was maybe three tablespoons of oil I just added in. Just a little splash. Something else I see a lot on Instagram ads that I know are bad are the really like flowy cute dresses. And every time that I buy one, because I'm like a sucker, and it's usually from like Shein or some other very cheap, what is it? Raomi, Romi, I don't know how you pronounce it. But I see these ads for their dresses that look so cute on the models. And they're like $12, and I'm like, ooh, that's a great price. I'll totally buy that. And then when it comes here, first off, I always get a medium. That's pretty much the size I am. But it, it fits like an extra small. And then I think like, okay, but I have a bigger bust. So like, maybe it's just that. Don't blame them. But like, inevitably, as I'm putting it on and taking it off, it also rips because it's made of like the same fabric as like tablecloths are made out of. So that's just another way Instagram ads it get me get me very quickly. And I think I saw the funniest post on Facebook and it basically said that like it doesn't matter what video you're watching as soon as the Facebook ad pops up on the video the video's over. And that really made me laugh because it's so true for me. But then I was thinking like Instagram's not that way because the ads get me and I think it's because I think it's another post. I'm kind of just like scrolling down and I see all these posts and then like it'll be a really cute dress and the girl looks so cute and I'm like, oh, who's that? And I'm like, oh, it's an ad, but I love that dress. And then, so this is what I don't understand and I don't know if it's only through like advertisements that you can edit this function, but their comments change per photo on the ad. 
which gets me again because then it tells you like the price it has all these like usually some star emojis or something but I just really like that idea like imagine if you could do a four picture slide and each comment was different on the photos but that's how Instagram gets you you probably have to pay money and do some type of advertisement to be able to have that privilege right now I'm breaking open pistachios to add to the bread thing um, so kind of a slow process you know slow and steady I saw this thing that okay and this is where I feel very in between on so one of the tips I saw for opening pistachios is that you okay let me show you so like a shell like this that's maybe a little bit more closed and kind of hard to open you take one of the shells you've already opened and then you like put it under one of the lips and pop it open and there you go which is so cool except then another post I saw said that pistachios that aren't naturally open it means they're like rotten inside or bad to eat and so I don't know if you should force it force it because what are those muscles you know like the seafood I think they have the same issue where like you can pretty much open most of them but if it's really hard to open one it probably is gone bad but it's alive so of course if it's been kept in a closed shell it would go bad I don't quite understand why pistachios would but I haven't looked into that quite frankly at all um, the oven makes a really bad smell when it turns on which I think it's because it's an electric stove because the stove burners do as well um, but it's just really interesting because I've had an electric stove before. Like, there was an electric stove, like, in the house I grew up in. But it was, like, the flat electric tops. I'm sure I'm not describing it well. But these ones are, like, the swirly ones. And they make a real bad smell. Super gross. Um, what else? Ooh, one of my future videos will definitely be going over my kombucha. I've been brewing like mad lately because kombucha is really interesting it's pretty reliant on warm weather in order to like cultivate well and have a good fizzy taste as well as just like getting the yeast to eat the sugar it needs warmth so I took a break for the winter which sucked but it was okay because it's also a lot of work and so I was in classes and therefore it was all right that I wasn't making kombucha but I missed drinking it daily because it's so expensive by the bottle especially considering it's literally sweet tea like it's just fermented that's the difference but it's like three fifty four dollars per bottle for sweet tea which is regular sweet tea you'd say no but kombucha you're like yeah because it is kind of more difficult to make your on your own but not even close to that difficult like well worth the money to just make it on your own okay so I've shelled and it's like a quarter cup of pistachios that are red tea and um, yeah, I'm going to rough chop these because I feel like if they were just whole, it might be kind of a lot to bite into. Pistachios are great though. When I got my tonsils removed, I was 13, which is like way too old to get tonsils removed because it hurt so badly. But regardless, when I got them removed, I like literally only ate ice cream for like a week. And the best part is I lost weight. Like, I remember being a bit thinner, which is crazy because I literally only ate ice cream. Um, but one of my favorites was the pistachio talenti, which is like a gelato. And I ate, like, two pints of it in a week. Um, but it was great. And really good because it was one of the ones that I walked away from not sick of. I also had a lot of Chunky Monkey um, and did not want that again, maybe ever, after having that. But I think it's usually, I'm just, I'm a pretty hard Cherry Garcia fan as far as Ben and Jerry's go. I just love the cherry chocolate. I always like cherry cordials too, like the little candies, except that it's so sweet. Like the sugary, it's almost like when you get fruit in syrup or fruit in juice, but cherry cordials are like syrup and syrup in juice. It's pure, pure syrup. So, I don't always love it, and that's why I love the Ben and Jerry's. Okay, added pistachios to this, looks great. I'm also gonna add gluten-free flour. And for the most part, I found that any 
bag that says it's a one to one ratio usually is, and it usually tastes just fine. So I'm just using the bag I got at Meyer. I don't really think it matters what brand you use. Although my like max all time favorite, if you can afford it, because it's kind of expensive initial investment, is to just get a bag of like rice flour and a bag of tapioca flour and do six cups of rice to every one cup of tapioca. And it's such a great balance and blend um, that has the same one-to-one -one baking ratio as whole wheat flour or all-purpose bleached flour does. Um, but without, like, it's just so hard to find a gluten-free flour that's not just filled with things to replace the, like gluten. Like, it's not a simple recipe. It's always, like, 10 items in gluten-free flour, which isn't bowl cool either. But, I don't know, try to get the best looking one with the fewest ingredients, but it's hard. I also right now have a nice coffee, which was so sweet. Bree and I, after dinner, we walked to the Short North Coffee Shop, and we, like, got to outside of the door. And it's usually open 24-7, I'm pretty sure. And when we got there, it was, like, maybe 6.30, and the door was locked, and all the lights were out. And I was like, what? And we checked on the door, and they're closing at 6 p.m. for Ramadan, which is totally legit. And so we were not upset at all. We were just like, ooh, okay, let me Google, like, the next closest one. And so we were, like, just standing out front on our phones trying to find the next closest coffee shop. And the guy who was working, like, came out to the door, and he opened it from the inside. He was like, hey, were you guys wanting to get something? And we were like, oh, yeah, but, like, you're close. It's no problem at all. And he was like, no, I felt so bad. Like, you guys, I know you've been waiting. I hate, like, seeing that. It made me feel so bad, which is really sweet because I think part of it is because he thought we could maybe see him and thought that, like, he could see us not getting, I had no one, like, I had no idea anyone was there. And he just came out, and he's like, I feel so bad. Of course, come in. And we were like, oh, no, thank you. So that was really sweet. And I got an iced coffee with a pump of lavender syrup and light almond milk. And anyone who has the opportunity, and it's usually at like kind of your local coffee shops, I found it. Definitely not at Starbucks or at Dunkin' Chains. But lavender syrup, if they have it there, in coffee is so fantastic. And I think it probably gets a bad rap for being like soapy or perfumey. Classic 
combos. Um, yeah, and this is Stone Mill Aldi brand cinnamon. Get some. Push that together. I'm also, I just finished my coffee, so I'm drinking a spindrift. And this is their lemon flavor, and it's good, it's refreshing, it's not fantastic. Tastes like what lemon water tastes like, but their raspberry lime is my current favorite flavor, and it is fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna call this chia egg good enough. Look at that nice goo. One banana, a cup of gluten-free flour. No, 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 no. This is gonna be it. We have one banana mashed, one chia egg incorporated, three quarters cup gluten-free flour, cup sugar, half a cup of cocoa powder, a teaspoon baking powder, half cup mashed, smashed, excuse me, pistachios, half cup dark chocolate chunks, and a little dash of salt. I'm just gonna put this all in the pan. Luckily the oven is preheated. And this is a non-stick pot. I'm just gonna say, look how that slid out. Maybe bowls are overrated. That was a clean, it just like swooped right into the pan. Um, yeah, and this will bake for maybe, you know, 25, 30 minutes. I'll check on it, and I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for watching my video. If you've made it this far, comment moist down below and subscribe. I post videos every Friday. I have to pee really badly. Bye-bye. How's the brownie? Really good. Mm-hmm. Are you getting any flavors? Lots of chocolate, like big chocolate. Can you tell anything Crispy else? on the outside a little bit, gooey on the inside. Can you tell any of the other ingredients? Yeah, there's some nuts in here, like walnuts maybe? Pistachios. Pistachios. Uh -huh. Ooh, yeah. Um, chocolate. Yeah. I don't know, other than that. Banana. Banana, really? Do you not taste well, it? 